Hi, everyone. How are you? We got another episode of Graveyard Talk here. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I've got my friend Royal Savoie here, who's with me all the way from the, the great northern area of Canada, the great white north. How are you, Royal? Good to have you here with me. Uh, I'm doing great, brother. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for doing this. Uh, Royal and I go back a, a, a ways. We uh, we met and hit it off immediately. And I always thought it would be a cool idea instead of the side of music that we all get to see. Royal works in the opposite end, the promotion and the managing and things like that. And I think that's really interesting. And I thought that this would be a great, great way and a great idea for people to, fig to find out how that works, what's it like behind the scenes and things like that. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to make it a good show and hardly speak whatsoever. You'll not hear me run my mouth that much today. Uh, okay. <laughs> we're going to let it be the Royal show. And, uh, and also, Royal, thanks, brother, for, for doing this with me. I appreciate you. Uh, oh my my pleasure my friend very, very much thank you yeah. and, and it's true royal and i are our brothers that that word gets thrown a, around quite a bit but no royal and i are absolutely brothers uh we're just from different areas that's all yeah uh that, that that's all it is uh royal let, let, let's just start right from the beginning what got you to go in this direction of the music industry um okay um i <laughs> I was never, I always just started being in the music industry for maybe the last 18 months mm -hmm. uh, on the promoting side, on this side. Um, however, you know, to, to rewind the clock a little bit, sure. uh, I started off in the entertainment world, kind of the darker side. I was a strip bar DJ. Um, oh, I didn't I was, know yeah, that. Yeah, I was just 19 years old. I'd gotten laid off from a, um, a construction labor job. I, you know... And I gotten laid off, and I needed a job. And uh, I saw an ad on TV that said, uh, "Not on TV, sorry." I saw an ad in the newspaper that said, um, um, uh, "DJ services um, requires a DJ, no experience, yada 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 yada." Huh. So I, you know, I applied because I needed something. Uh, and the funny thing is, you, you couldn't get me to talk in front of people back then. Oh. I used to. I used to fail any oral report, anything I had to do to stand up in front of people. Uh, right. I even failed my red, uh, my red sail, um, the Canadian Yachting Association instructor level. Uh, my yeah, because I couldn't stand up in front of a, I couldn't teach a class. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. But you know, desperation. I needed a job, and I thought I'd just be doing. Uh, I thought I'd just be doing weddings and you know, Christmas functions and bar mitzvahs, you know, right. a, a DJ, right. like, you know, that. Uh, it turns out that after after the interview, uh, he told me to meet him at the uh, at the Fox Pub, and the Fox Pub historically in Victoria was one of the seedier uh, strip clubs. Yeah, ah, your typical, okay. what you're thinking, that <laughs> was it. Uh, and buck 19, three days of training, I, I ended up getting the job, which... Uh, gave me, you know, started how to, you know, how to talk on the mic, how to work a room, uh, introduced me to booking entertainment, working a budget, that kind of thing. Right. Now, granted, that was 30 years ago, but, right. you know, that's where I cut my teeth, so to speak, of being on stage and, and hosting, uh, like we were hosting contests. And, uh, and I, of course, I would also uh, <laughs> later on do the occasional wedding where you're an MC and then I do other MCs. Uh, and then, you know, I, I was hit deep in that world for about 20 odd years. Nice. Uh, and then I got out of it and, um, there's a block in time where I was military and, and then I was a lot of other stuff. And uh -huh. so, um, when I came back to Victoria, um, I kind of, um, I kind of got lost for a while in my, uh, in my world. Uh, um, uh, my, uh, my, I was an, I'm an alcoholic, I'm a recovering alcoholic, but I've been sober for 18 months almost excellent yeah well done well and done, i gotta sir. tell you that was my turn one of my turning points uh i knew i had to stop. i knew i had to stop and i need i knew i needed to uh, recreate myself <laughs> so um so yeah my friend of mine uh stefano uh pasta art farm studios which side of the hat is it right there yeah cool uh cool. he had opened up a studio um and him himself has been in the world of entertainment and uh, he was with a touring band they called Saul. Uh, 
uh, worked as a drum tech for a lot of, so, I mean, his connection to the, the music world, um, and it was not, uh, when he said he wanted to open up a studio, it was not a surprise uh, at all. Uh, and so as he opened that up, I was kind of starting to get my footing, and I had started doing some MCing. Um, mm-hmm. I did my first sober MC job was about a week out of detox, uh, and uh, it was Western Speedway, which is a landmark here in Victoria. It's, uh, it's a speedway. It's a raceway. And it's been here for 60-odd years if my oh. numbers were all Sorry. <laughs> but uh, they were doing the final weekend, and I was asked to host it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from that, other people in the war in the in Victoria kind of started picking me up on that. And that's kind of where Royalty Entertainment was born uh, to do MC hosting, um, and I didn't want to do weddings and, and stuff like that, but you know, stuff like that does pay the bill. Uh, right. so the originally royalty entertainment was, uh, entertainment services, um, uh, for, for hosting and for, for, uh, music, uh, mm-hmm. and for whatever your entertainment needs. But I hadn't even thought about uh, doing the booking uh, at all. Um, and then Stefano opened up the art farm uh, with a bunch of practice studios in the basement and the uh, amazing, and we've talked about this another a you know, few times that we have uh, talked like this, uh, mm-hmm. the upstairs studio, he's got some amazing people, uh, Lucis Perot and Danny Dean are the you know, amazing sound uh, uh, engineers who have taught me so much. This year and a half has been a learning curve and it's, uh, and it's really recreated, being, allowed me to recreate myself uh, with a lot of support from people who knew where I came from, uh, oh, right. and and know where I'm, uh, know where I want to go, and uh, you know they they weren't some of the fair, uh, they weren't some of the people that were in my world many years ago that are where are they now, you know the party's oh. over and I'm standing there with the broom in an empty room and the Fairweather fans or uh, friends are gone, but my real ones they're still here mm-hmm. and they're still supporting and they're my guys so family nice. family guys. Nice. Um, so uh, the long-winded answer is um, the the promoting kind of found me when I started working with some of these bands uh, and um, and more more working with them as their host and being there as the event. Um, and then there was the first night I met Ruth and Karma at an event. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was introduced to them. And, and and somebody said, well, Royal could probably find something because uh-huh. I've been doing events, but I hadn't been booking them. I'd been asked, but I knew some people. I ended up, you know, I know a guy who knows a guy, you know? <laughs> They're so good sometimes, yes. Nothing wrong. Yeah, and so then I, 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 I took a flyer and I did my first event, which was a year ago. Uh, my first, the first event was a year ago, uh, April 29th was my wow. first event. Nice. Uh, yeah, with Lucid Karma, Chasing Phantoms, Wolf Phantom, and Cyborg were my, they allowed me to cut my teeth. They allowed me to make a lot of mistakes. That's good, though. You can learn, that's what you learn from, though. Not everything in life is perfect, and mistakes are a good thing. Oh, There's mistakes are, right? um, you know, I, I learned from my successes. Uh, this mm-hmm. is so cliche, so bumper sticker. I learned from my successes, but of course, I learned way more from my failures. Yeah. Uh, 100%. And you know, I had I had a really good guy. I want to do a shout out uh, to Mr. Ben Whitrock, uh, my sound engineer, my sound man extraordinaire, who was my first sound guy in my first event at the Phoenix, uh, uh-huh. Denny and Mike. Uh, and he, to this day, we're we're tight, we're brothers, and I still listen. I still he still can teach me. Uh, and the first time I worked with him, uh, you know, he took me under his wing as far as. Uh, you know, do this and don't do that and make sure blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, you know, as an open book, now a year, uh, a full year later of promote of doing booking, mm-hmm. um, I, uh, I'm i doing bigger ones coming up. I kind of lost my train because uh, I, I, I feel um, it's amazing where I've come from. Here's one of my whiteboards. Yeah, I was thinking uh, that. I have many whiteboards. And I, uh, work it. I use whiteboards because if I use a computer, I forget. But if I write it down on my on my whiteboard, right, then right. I have everything settled. So, I, I was looking at that while you were talking, and I'm like, that is one busy guy, right? <laughs> that's, that, that's one of two. <laughs> one of two. 
Well, do you have do you have one for bands that to go out and one for the radio show? Uh actually that's the other one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other one. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's, and, and by the I, way, we talked and we're going to talk about uh, your date that we're going to have you on my radio show, but we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so I, I have to ask, and I'm sure people are thinking about it because of the way it is in America, but when you were doing the strip club, did you have to sound really jive? When you, you know, because that's the, that's the image you get here. It's like the, hey, now coming up on stage right now with Savannah, you know, or something like that. Yeah, it, well, I mean, they all say we kind of sound the same. Uh, you know, others, the one thing I was always told by my, um, by my mentor was, don't sound like Randy Radio. Don't try to be the voice. Uh, <laughs> I mean, find your voice because. Um, you know, I'd never done that before and I'm, you know, I'm introducing, I've got a room full of, you know, bikers and tradesmen and I mean, we're not talking church social here. We're talking, <laughs> right. we're talking about people that are going to criticize you in eight seconds if you don't got that room. Of course. Uh, and yeah. so he goes, you know, just be yourself. And, and, and so, you know. Welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Any showtime once again down here at the Pleasure Palace. Do shout hands together. Get those dollar bills out there, gentlemen. Here she comes, Pixie Goodley. <laughs> I love it. I think it's fantastic. I mean, but you know, and but that's not the voice I use on. That's not the voice I use on my radio show. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, and that's not the voice I use when I'm emceeing uh, on stage when I'm hosting. You know, right. there's a certain projection you've got a patter. Um, there's a certain thing when I'm, you know, I, I just hosted this big, uh, over uh, two weekends ago, uh, for, uh, yeah, 420 weekend a friend of mine put on a really big, uh, tribute show. that was uh regular people that the Pantera tribute and I didn't Island maiden. Nice. Uh, we can figure out what that tribute is. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rock City Riot, they're not, they're, uh, Jesus Priest. and of course, Wolf Venom was there. Uh, but I was asked to host that. And when you're up there, see, the great thing is hosting a metal show. Is if you start losing your voice, right. it sounds even cooler. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so now we know. Uh, but it's amazing. It, I was honestly, just ask real it's quick. amazing where I came, where uh, starting at the strip club and and, and ending up here. You know. Right now, now when you, I I had to ask you um, when you're up there in front of all these people at a rock show at a at a concert like that, do you just stay being yourself? Do, do do or do you do you jive it up for like an, a thing like that or like the show you were just talking about where you were losing your voice but it sounded cool and all do do, do you stay yourself? Or? Um, my outside pers my outside persona and my home persona mm -hmm. um are are actually fairly in in well you this is to me this is who you're talking to this is royal I'm a pretty much the same um when I'm getting up on the stage, but I'm a little bit more of me because you're wanting to get the crowd going, um, you know, uh, but, you know, a lot, you know, when I, again, when I was first doing my, my thing, uh, I swearing is not right. I don't swear more to sound cooler. Swearing Good. is one thing I rarely do when I'm on, on stage. Good. Uh, well, I, like I mean, that. except when you need to put it in for context, you know, on a metal mm -hmm. show, and the band ends and you come out and go, fuck yeah. I mean, put it in there. <laughs> nice. But, you know, every other word. I mean, I've heard other hosts at other shows and, hey, they do their thing. Go ahead. Right. They do their thing. Right. Uh, but, you know, I started even in a strip club. I was told, you know, you don't need to swear. Uh, and I stayed my, you don't need to because, I mean, look at, all, look at all that's already happening out there. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> as answer in a long winded, um, I'm pretty much the same. I'm good. Uh, what you're seeing here, I'm just a little bit more of me up on stage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, to be comfortable here, it's not like this is the first time you and I have met. So it's like, well, know, that's we, it. Yeah. We know each other and, and, and that makes things a lot easier. Um, I, I did want to ask you, now you said Lucid Karma was the first band that you, that, that you promote and, and manage and all that. How do you get to the other bands that you promote and manage? Well, that, that's interesting. Um, once I started managing, once I started booking, uh, I told Lucid Karma when they first uh, approached me, or when I was introduced, and the person kind of 
uh, threw me under the under a nice bus. It wasn't a bad bus to be thrown under, right. but he kind of said, "Well, Royal can do it for you." Um, sure, sure, <laughs> I can do that. There you uh, go. Throw me in the water, I will swim to shore. There you go. Uh, and so I did. And you know, there was three other bands that I that were there too. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and we hit it off as well. Uh, but there was something, you know, there's something about all the bands, but Lucid Karma, uh, there was something about them. Uh, and they asked me to do some more with them, and I did. Uh -huh. uh, and we really did, we we hit it off, and, I, and I'd go to the practices. And originally I was, you know, telling them, you know, I'll, I'll book you, because I was also new to this whole environment, this new world, too. Right. Uh, right. I would all, I'd get some help, uh, you know, whisper in a few, a few ears, and and get some guidance but i really didn't want to bite off more than i could chew i didn't want to start coming off as this as this guy that could do it and of course you know i and i was fairly new in my sobriety too mm -hmm. so that was something i needed to remember uh that you know there was other if i got myself too hip deep into something uh where would that make me and my you know my emotional person, like if, if everything fell apart and I wasn't in it, sucked and I didn't know what I was doing. Right. So I was still new in my in my sobriety. So I wanted to be careful what I was doing. And I was new to this, so I took it bit by bit. So I told a lot of people the same thing. I said, you know, I'll work with you. I'll, I'll find you some shows, but, um, you know, what day at a time kind of thing on both sides, one day at a time. Sure. Uh, sure. But with Lucid, we had some conversations. And after about the third show that I booked, mm -hmm. um, one of them at a practice said, well, you're our manager, are you? And I went, um, I don't know. Am I? Yeah, I want to hear from all you guys. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not just going to kind of swing in and, 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 you know, be the manager. Right. And they, they said, yeah, we, we kind of trust you. We like where you're going. We like how you we." Uh, we all hit it off. The personalities you've met, Ruth and Carmo, doing mm -hmm. this. I have. Um, I can't yeah. talk more about them. I will, uh, you know, too much about them. They are a lot of our my friends. A lot of the other bands. I don't want to single anybody out too hard, but uh, Lucid Karma, uh, as well as a lot of other people. But the Lucid Karma was really pivotal in recreating Royal, uh, giving me the confidence um, and to go forward and take some chances. Uh, cause they, they gave me that confidence. They kind of gave me, uh, they gave me the, 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 conf they gave me the ability to just go do something. And after the first year, they kind of put the white flag up and said, we love you, but we need time to write because <laughs> I, I got them out there. Uh, and right. they gave me the, the, they gave me the autonomy, uh, of, of their, with their music, um, career or their name. Uh, cause we always had a, we always had, uh, an, uh, we always have had now an agreement that I don't, I don't talk about uh, their music creativity, their art is theirs. Okay. Uh, I, I have nothing to say about what they do artistically. Right. Uh, I will take them in a direction, and I'll do promotions, I'll do marketing, uh, and and we have it great that way. Uh, we are, you know, the partnership, and so. Um, to I know, see, it is the royal show, lots of talk. <laughs> that's good, that's um, good. but that's, that's what that one made me the man using the manager. So I call I'm a booking agent and a manager, but I've had other people call uh, come to me and ask me to manage them too because they've kind of seen where Lucid Karma's going right. with my management and their skill predominantly. Uh, and they're asking the same thing. Well. I've said yes to a couple people, but I said yes as a caveat. There's a band called Lid Kicker. Uh, they work out of Art Farm. I love them. They're all phenomenal. Uh, but uh, And I said I will, but small M. Small M management. Okay. Um, because, you know, yeah, you have to look at the bands that you're, that are, you're working with. Are they, pre are they prepared to go on a six-week tour like we are doing you know, look what are what are you wanting to do are you wanting to work the island and just do shows i can book you i will be your you'll come to me i will do bookings for you uh oh, okay rather than them just kind of going around and finding bookings i will be their booking manager whereas <laughs> with lucid i i am their manager uh capital in, in, yeah <laughs> yeah that's cool
do you, do you do it all this with every band by yourself or, or is there such thing as having a partner in doing this stuff? Um, I have, I, um, with Lucy Karma, um, myself and Karma, the five of them were each other's partners, you know, um, okay. uh, uh but as far as my management, royalty entertainment, as far as royalty entertainment goes, uh, I am a one-man operation. However, I did take on uh, Sam Story. Love you, sweetie. She is my assistant. Uh, my She's my executive assistant. She's my right hand. If I can't show up to, if, if I have double bookings, if I'm somewhere with Karma, but I have an event at the Phoenix, she is me. Gotcha. So she's my okay. assistant uh, event promoter. Sweet, uh, sweet. I like I've that. I've also I've also got Becky, um, Becky Evans. Uh, love you, sweet. Uh, she's my also not only is she Lucid Karma's uh, uh, merchandise woman, she's also royalty entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and I have other support from other people, but as far as the day to day running, uh, you know, I don't. Sometimes I find going back to who I used to be, I don't work well and play well with others. <laughs> <laughs> nice because i like things my way however right. i did do a co-produced show a couple times uh -huh. with uh journeyman uh, production uh colton out of um out of uh vancouver and uh brian goble out of um nanaimo uh, bfd production first time i had done co-production uh -huh. and uh it was a good experience uh -huh. uh, working with other people working with you know so I didn't, you know, my say wasn't just everything, which is normal because it's my show. Uh, working with others was, a, was uh, I liked it. It opened my eyes. It taught me a lot of of, of uh, things that I wasn't doing that I should be doing. Wow. Yeah. Learn. It's a, uh, it's a grading scale. You've got to learn the, sc the scale. And, all. and do, you, do you find yourself still learning? Yeah, that you have, you um, every, a hundred percent. Everything yeah. is, everything's learning. Uh, you know, again, no bumper sticker cliches, but if you stop, if you stop having your mind open, then you're just being ignorant, and you're you're gonna fail. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, because there's not one way to do something, and if you and if you think there is, uh, then you're not open to success. I mean, I was doing certain things uh, certain ways, mm -hmm. and uh, an individual who I I take sage advice from <laughs> says, you know, if you did it this way, and the way I was doing it, nothing wrong with it, but it right. was this level. The way I was being suggested to do it would bring it up to the next level. Okay. Yeah. Makes it's all. Sense. It's all. It's all a, a level of professionalism. Yeah. One works. One works better. There you go. Not like that. Yeah. I got to ask you too. Now, now you're into the radio show biz. Uh, tell me about that. Why you are? Uh, why you're having the radio show now? And and uh, is this the evolution of Royal? Um. Well, I think yeah. Again, yeah. I had to recreate myself, uh -huh. uh, and but there were still pieces of me from my past um, that I always wanted to do radio. I mean, once I once I started MC, once I started doing the doing the job at nineteen, mm -hmm. uh, and once I found I had I had this talent, this voice, right, uh, and the ability to, you know, and, and you know this as an interviewer as well, you have to be able to talk on the fly. Yeah, you can't yes. have the ums and ahs. You can't have the yeah, the filter has to go. Yes. And you and you've got to be able to think and talk at the same mo at the same time. And I was good at that. Uh doing the emceeing and uh the the, the, the emceeing, the show hosting. And I, I in my you know, when I started at nineteen and as I said I did it for on and off for almost twenty years, right. uh I always wanted to do radio. However, um the world that I got into, into being 20 and 21 and 23 and 24, when I was you know, full-time strip bar DJ mm -hmm. or club DJ and, and, and that world, um, I kept getting older and I kept missing the boat uh, by, by myself. I mean, I, I used to make excuses that, oh, I'm too old and, uh, and, and it's an old boy's school. At the mm -hmm. at end of the day, my lifestyle prevented me and my excuses prevented me from actually, um, you know, grabbing myself by the nuts and saying, you know, stop this, go after what you want. But sure. I didn't. My 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 addiction to my world kind of kept me on it further and further away from what I always kind of wanted to do. Uh -huh. uh, and then I was and then I kind of resigned myself that, you know, towards uh, life. Then you you grow up. 
uh, and in my 30s and my 40s, and then again more excuses. So the long and the short was as I as I was uh, getting a few months into my recovery uh, and going to certain uh, programs and meeting some certain people and you know talking and uh, and uh, there was an individual who had a radio show. His name was uh, Carson. Uh, and he had a radio show, uh, and he brought me in and said, because I said, oh my God, I've always wanted to do that. Uh, and I, you know, and I told him my little soft story, uh, and he said, well, let's go. So we went to, he had a radio show that afternoon. So we went to the station where we sat down, uh, and we, uh, got the first edition of Thrash Can was born, uh, not quite by name that mm. particular show but the following weekend i had all i had all week long to think about it because he wanted me to co-host again and he said the next show is going to be your programming what do you want to do and i i said i want to do i know i want to do metal yeah, yeah. and it's going to be called thrash can and so for the first little while it was me um um shadowing his spot until i did my spot and now uh you know i'm, I'm loving it it's amazing and, and that comes through on the show too you, you, oh, you're thank having you. fun i i love i'm I having love fun hearing. and and i'm bringing people on now i'm doing and it's evolving i'm doing now i'm doing um phone interviews in studio interviews cool. um which is great because you know there's a lot of people like yourself uh across the united states there's tim with ewl out mm -hmm. in iowa there uh tim yep. wall wall Wolzen. sorry tim well, listen, well, listen. Yeah, Tim, Sorry, yeah, Tim. Yeah. Well, Tim's been um, on my show yeah. too, so it's it's all good. He understands. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? Now with doing what I do, mine's a radio show and it's streaming. Uh, mm -hmm. Connect with you, connect with him, and there's a couple other ones over the air tonight on the air tonight uh, with okay. Dave and uh, them. <laughs> and <laughs> Sorry, them. Dave. <laughs> um, but the great thing now is the where I started to hear small. Um, it networks and we can get the, the the independent underground music out there because um you know the radio show that i probably would have done if i started doing it at 19 would have been at a commercial corporate radio station and that would have been a different path to my universe which would have been something different mm -hmm. you know maybe right. i would have been playing some justin bieber i don't know whatever oh. maybe, whatever <laughs> station right i don't know but you know working with a station doing my show where i have complete creativity a complete autonomy and i can network with all you guys across the united states canada uh and we there's some great bands i mean you know that oh absolutely uh, yeah. that really need to get out there on airplay and there's not a format for them. no and that's why i started my show i i you know people have asked how come you don't have bigger bands on there i i really don't have any interest in the, these bands that have made their millions of dollars because yep. like, there's so much really great music that no one's being able to hear and i'm like you know what i'm going to do a show where that's all we we do that's all we talk about is is underground band our underground bands and, and the music and find out how they come to be and and people are like well that's really interesting they think it's a neat idea and i'm like well you know hopefully that's you'll continue to think that way but you know if you're set already and you're a millionaire nah that's fine Congratulations to you, but I really don't have interest in that. Well, you know, and that's what, and that's what some of the. I mean, you're never going to hear, you're never going to hear Slipknot on any on any radio station generally. But they have made their move, and they do yeah. their festival stuff, right. and they don't need promotion. Um, you know, and and they, because they've had great time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Lucy Karma. One day, I hope somebody says you're too big to play on this show, <laughs> and I'll be like, well, thank you very much. There you go. And we'll see you at Sick New World. <laughs> but, <laughs> I but, love it. Um, the, you know, the, the one thing that's, that's really been great is um, the support from all the bands that, uh, that I mean, everybody wants, everybody wants to be on the air. Uh, but the one problem is there's so much, and I've been starting to find this now, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of these pr uh, promotional drop your song to your sites but then yeah. eventually they're like send me thirty dollars or send me eighty dollars or send right. me this and uh you know if you're trying to make ten dollars off a band that's only making four dollars off a t-shirt and right. maybe a hundred 
I mean, and, and you're going to be tossing it into robo stream. Uh, I mean, are they real streams? Are they, you know, I, I'm new to this world uh, uh, of uh, kind of the next level of where we're going with Lucy Karma. Uh, I'm, I'm now I'm got I'm being careful of stepping in potholes. Who do I trust? Who don't I trust? Right. Who, who is, who has the best interest for me? Yet the first thing they say is send me 40 bucks. And that's when you know you're in trouble, right? Well, there. it's like, oh, you know, oh. I, I do understand there nothing is free for certain things. I mean, right. but if you have the ability to give somebody 4,000 streams, what are you doing? You're just hitting a button and those are robo streams. I mean, if people are listening to me and I'm, I'm totally wrong, say something in the comments. Uh, yeah. Tell, tell, tell uh, my friend here, uh, tell Robert. Uh, that Royal is full of shit, but the the puddles <laughs> the puddles we've been I've been I've been waiting through. Uh, everybody wants some money, yeah. and uh, and we just got to be careful. I guess that's all of my at the end of the day. We just got to be careful. Absolutely. Um, and and you know I I think talking with my band too, using just getting into the Spotify here. Um, I've learned a lot from my, my band because. Uh, they're all all Lucid Karma, and you know what? All the bands that I've worked with and talked right. with, uh, they they know their trade. Uh, and I'm new to this Facebook. Oh my God, I'm so new to the social media. Uh, right. uh, Nikki Nightmare, my rhythm guitarist, gave me Social Media 101 last year, and now created a monster. <laughs> but there's That's a lot a I thing. don't know, and and my and uh, Chris Heretic, my drummer. Um, you know, I listen to a lot of the stuff he does say about uh, about because uh, he's been there. Yeah, uh, he was with a touring band for a while, and and his knowledge about how a social media and how uh, some of the the ups and downs of the bots and the fake streams. You know, we're sitting. One of our songs, Tower, is sitting at twenty four thousand streams, and it's only a year in. Oh, they're gonna kill me for the date, but it's only about fourteen months. It's only about fourteen months old. And those are organic and natural streams. Nice. Uh, you know, we released Your Poison on April 12th, and we got 1,400 streams in nice. 48 hours. You know, no services, no nuts, and we put it out there, and people liked it. Nice. So nice. I think I'd rather, you know, rather than pay somebody to get 4,000 streams, but our followers and listeners don't go up. That's who we're looking for. Right. People, love us. Follow us. There you go. There you go. <laughs> right, so well, I got to thank you for being with me. Thank you for doing this with me. And it's been a pleasure. And I hope an eye opener <clears throat> for people that watch the show. And, and all Introducing.